Welcome to the 2023 Colorado College Athletic Hall of Fame induction ceremony at Ed Robeson Arena. Now, please welcome your host for tonight's event, Ken Landau. Good evening, everybody. And welcome. Welcome to an evening of excellence. CC, two C's, excellence, two C's. We're celebrating excellence here tonight. This is the 2023 Colorado College Athletic Hall of Fame induction ceremony, as we all know, and it's my great pleasure to be the host here this evening. Colorado College Athletics is proud to present this signature event in this beautiful arena, the Ed Robeson Arena. It's the second time we've held this event here. Tonight celebrates those who have made outstanding contributions to Colorado College Athletics, and this group marks our 22nd class. Let's welcome to the floor the class of 2023 Hall of Fame inductees. Jordan DeGainer, men's swimming, class of 2012. The family of Nick Maestrom, football, class of 1993. Helen Sneed, women's lacrosse, class of 2006. The family of Leo Hill, men's basketball and baseball, class of 1948. The family of Dang Pivovec, women's soccer coach from 1983 through 1990. And the 1992 men's soccer team, Captain John Whitfield, co-captain Robert Lipp, co-captain Ezra Bales, Serapio Baca, Ian Krieger, Noah Epstein, Mark Handy, Takuma Hayashi, Tom Heisler, Josh Howell, Jeff Lee, Aaron Lujan, Jeff Montera, Andre Nunley, Jeff Spite, Ben Straley, Mark Thomas, Nick Watterson, and the head coach, Horst Richardson. To welcome everyone here this evening, it's a great pleasure and an honor to introduce Leslie Irvine. Back on June 1st of 2019, that was Leslie's first day 
as Vice President and Director of Athletics here at Colorado College, and also the Hall of Fame induction for the class of 2019. Since her arrival, Colorado College has experienced unprecedented success. During her four years here at CC, the Tigers have had seven teams compete at the NCAA tournament, 13 conference team championships, including an unprecedented four straight by the men's cross country team, 14 conference coach of the year honors, and seven student athletes have been named All-Americans. In addition, the hockey team advanced to the National Collegiate Hockey Conference championship game for the very first time just last month. Our student athletes have also been outstanding, not only in the field of competition, but in the classroom, earning countless national and conference academic awards over the last four years. During her time here, Leslie has provided key leadership in the planning, construction, and introduction of this outstanding space to the campus and to the city of Colorado Springs. Ed Robeson Arena has become a critical community space, and since its opening, every single CC hockey game has been sold out. In 2021, Leslie launched the record-breaking Tiger Excellence Campaign, an annual fundraising initiative celebrating the history of Colorado College athletics and charting a course for its ambitious future and championship culture commitment. This campaign continues to go from strength to strength with record-breaking numbers again this year. Leslie serves on the board for the Colorado Springs Sports Corporation, the Olympic City USA Task Force, and the Colorado Springs Sports Authority. She was also elected by her peers to the Women Leaders in College Sports Board of Directors in 2020. And for this academic year, Leslie is serving as the chair for both the NCHC Athletic Council and the SCAC AD's Council. For those of you who know her, Leslie is a proud former head coach and student athlete and works tirelessly to support the student athlete experience as part of the educational mission. I am very pleased and honored to welcome the Vice President and Director of Athletics at Colorado College, Leslie Irvine. Well, hi, everybody. I need a little more than that. So we need some more wine and beer in all of you. Um, thank you, Ken. We are so happy to have you here with us tonight. And I want to thank you for your service to Colorado College over the years. You are truly part of our family, Ken. I also want to thank everyone who has worked so hard on planning and executing our event tonight. I think we all agree that this is a marquee event in a spectacular setting. And I am so grateful for everyone who has contributed. Together we gather as a community to celebrate some of the all-time Colorado College athletic greats. Colorado College Tigers who truly excelled, set new standards, and left legacies that shape us all today. Tonight we honor history, tradition, service, and achievement. While we stand in this moment of excellence and celebration, I am deeply proud of the championship culture that is currently alive and well within CC Athletics. This year has been filled with historic moments and competitive progress that connects us back to the historic tradition of success here. From our coaches of the year to most ever wins to championship appearances, our athletic programs are thriving and focused on providing transformational experiences for our student athletes. Simply put, the future is bright and exciting. As I soak up this moment, I am struck by all that is meaningful from our athletic commitments. The lessons learned, the relationships built, the long ago moments that live with us as if they just happened, and the lifelong friendships and connections we made. Tonight we come together and are reminded of these life-changing and shaping moments. We reminisce and we celebrate. We will hear from our inductees of how their experiences shape them as leaders for life and prepare them in ways that we don't always expect. 
Tonight we will hear how athletics was a part of our alums' CC education and shaped them into the people they were and are today. To our coaches in the audience, understand the difference you make. We are so grateful for your work and commitment. And to our student athletes who are here, I hope you are inspired. Soak it in and know your commitment and dedication will live with you forever. We know it's not always easy, but we promise you the commitment and the journey is what matters. My sincere congratulations to all of the inductees. You are truly incredible. Go Tigers. Thank you very much, Leslie. Anybody hungry out there? Yeah, I figured. Well, it's time to eat, so let's enjoy our dinner and dessert. We ask that you wait until your table is invited to go up to the buffet. Enjoy your meal, and we'll get the program started in a little while. Again, welcome and enjoy your meal. As we get things started, let's first recognize past Hall of Fame inductees that are with us here tonight. 2019 Hall of Fame inductee, Melanie August. Women's Basketball, Class of 2009. 2021 Hall of Fame inductee with the 1973 football team, Mark Buchanan, Class of 1976. 2006 Hall of Fame inductee, Jay Angalen, Men's Soccer, Class of 1974. 2008 Hall of Fame inductee, Mary Everett Conero, women's lacrosse and soccer, class of 1999. 2017 Hall of Fame inductee with the 1989 women's lacrosse soccer team, Jen Rody Hoagland, class of 91. 2021 Hall of Fame inductee, with the 1973 football team, Bruce Colbazin, class of 1975. 2009 Hall of Fame inductee, Aaron Lujan, men's soccer, and a member of the 1992 team, class of 95. 2005 Hall of Fame inductee, Heather O'Brien, track and field, Class of 1999. 2005 Hall of Fame inductee, Stephen Paul, founder of the women's soccer program, Class of 1978. 2019 Hall of Fame inductee, Horst Richardson, former men's soccer coach. 2013 Hall of Fame inductee, Michelle Secor, women's basketball and lacrosse coach, class of 1980. 2006 and 2017 Hall of Fame inductee, as a member of the 1986 and 1989 women's soccer teams, Shelly Saparovich, class of 1990. 2011 Hall of Fame inductee, Ted Swan, football, class of 1977. And 2007 Hall of Fame inductee, the founder of the Athletics Hall of Fame and former athletic director at Colorado College, Max Taylor. Before we get into the inductions, we'd like to acknowledge Barbara Yalick, class of 1953 and parent 1977. You may have seen her name on the building as you entered here tonight. The Mike and Barbara Yalick Student Center is adjacent to the Ed Robeson Arena, which is the home to the Student Wellness Center, Health Services and Counseling, the bookstore, and the mail center, as well as an art studio. 
Barbara has played an integral role in the Athletic Hall of Fame for many years. We are grateful for her contributions and continued support of Colorado College. Barbara, thank you. We'd also like to give a tremendous thank you to Kelly McCommons, John Pack, and Colorado College student Dylan Carey for producing the vignettes for tonight's inductees, and also to Sean Patrick for narrating the videos. Folks, please turn your attention now to the screen as we recognize our first inductee, Jordan DeGainer. There's only one person to win an individual title at the NCAA Division III National Championships in the history of the Colorado College Swimming Program, and that person is Jordan DeGainer. Originally from Alaska, DeGainer came to Colorado College in the fall of 2008 after competing in several state championship meets and setting a number of school records in Wisconsin. During his first two years at CC, he gathered several NCAA B-cut times, then exploded on the national scene as a junior. That season he was named the SCAC Swimmer of the Year and finished fourth in the country in the 200-yard freestyle, earning his first of two All-America honors. As a senior, he stepped up his game even more and won the 200-yard freestyle race at the Division III National Championships with a school record time of 1 minute 37.51 seconds, a mark that still stands today. He also holds the school record in the 50 and 100 freestyle races and the 100 butterfly. In addition to being named a two-time All-American, DeGainer was named the Academic All-America first team in 2012, second team in 2011, and honorable mention in 2010. He's one of only two student athletes in the history of Colorado College Athletics to earn multiple All-America and Academic All-America honors. Following his graduation from Colorado College, DeGainer received his PhD in chemistry from Northwest University and is currently a patent agent with McDonald, Bainan, Holbert, and Berghoff LLP. Jordan and his wife Kate are the proud parents of a son, Henry. Please welcome Jordan DeGainer to the Colorado College Athletic Hall of Fame. The presenter for Jordan Gainer has spent 48 years as a collegiate head coach, Selected to the College Swimming and Diving Coaches Association of America's 100 Greatest College Swimming and Diving Coaches of the Past Century, a two-time Division II Coach of the Year at Northern Michigan, the head coach of the swimming and diving programs at CC for 17 years, and named Men's Staff of the Year at the 2023 SCAC Championships. Please welcome men's and women's swimming and diving head coach, Ann Goodman James. Thank you. First, let me just start by saying congratulations to all of the inductees. Uh, it's so exciting to learn about all of your accomplishments uh, and to share tonight with you. Um, it's really an honor to be able to talk to you about Jordan DeGainer. He was the ultimate example of that pure definition of, of a student athlete. Um, not only did he balance these two major aspects of his life, but he did both of them with excellence. Um, as a swimmer, in addition to that national championship you heard about, kind of leading up to that, he was also a nine-time SCAC conference champion, uh, the two-time swimmer of the year. While he was here, he set five individual school records and five relay school records. Four of those individual and one of the relays still stand 11 years later. Uh, his road to the national championship was kind of a step-by-step -step progression. Uh, freshman year, he made some NCAA cuts but didn't make the meet. Sophomore year, got in and was actually ninth in the 200 free. And as they mentioned in the video, uh, junior year, moved up to fourth in that event. And then finally, senior year, became the national champion. He was also that year part of an All-American relay with some of his teammates from Colorado College. 
So I've, I've been fortunate to coach a number of national champions, and I can honestly tell you the only one of those races I remember was Jordan's in 2012. It's the only one I could really describe to you. And I talked to the team about this this morning. We thought going into the meet that he had a chance to win this event, but knew it would be pretty tough. And he was always known as kind of a back half swimmer who comes from behind at the end. It was very exciting. But I'm just going to tell you, he took it to the extreme that day. Just about gave me a heart attack. Um, you know, so here's this person we think is going to possibly be a national champion. And at the 100, halfway through the race, he's in seventh. And that's seventh out of eight. Um, at the 150, he's in seventh. And at the 175, he's really moved up a little, fifth. There's one length of the pool to go, and somehow he blasted past all those people to get his hand on the wall first. Uh, pretty, pretty exciting. Everybody at the meet said that was the most dramatic event of the whole championships. Uh, but, you know, more than being proud of all those accomplishments, he was also really fun to coach. Um, our assistant coach, Chris Sullivan, and I used to talk about how grateful we were that he trusted us enough to just try new things. I think the reason he got so much better while he was here was he was willing to make changes and he was really willing to work on those changes when he was exhausted. And that's why they showed up so well in all of his races. Whether he was encouraging his teammates in practice, cheering them on in meets, or even saving them from the bottom of the pool, he demonstrated the power of team first and made everyone around him better. It was an honor to coach Jordan and certainly an honor to recognize him tonight. Please welcome class of 2023 Athletics Hall of Fame inductee, Jordan DeGainer. Yes. Thank you, Ann. Uh, this is really a great honor, and I'm really humbled to be here. It's been so much fun you know, seeing the current team, the current athletic department, and meeting the, the, what the, the future of the college is. And I, I really can't wait to, to watch that unfold in the years to come. I uh, swam uh, competitively since I was six years old. And I think I counted up. I had like 20 coaches over those years. And I can definitely say by far that Ann was the best swimming coach I ever had in just technical understanding of the sport, but also knowing how to prepare us and also how to make us ready for competition and how to have fun. And I think that really ties into what CC is all about, of being able to operate at a very high level while also having just a lot of fun while doing it. And I think that that made me a better swimmer. And that's something that I've, I've carried forward in life as well. I think, and one, some of the most important parts were how my teammates supported me through all of those, those meets. Taking a relay team to nationals was a dream come true. It, it, was, it was awesome. It was so much fun to race with your friends and have all of that just camaraderie. Because you know, swimming can be really hard. <laughs> and, you know, holding your head underwater is not a lot of fun. But, Having the, that team of just like fun, interesting, dynamic people who all just had the goal of supporting each other uh, made it a whole of a lot easier. So once again, I'd like to thank Ann for all of those years of support, our diving coach Ellen for all being a, a ray of sunshine, and uh, everyone that I, I swam with over the years, and uh, the athletic department, the selection committee. This is really a, a wonderful and humbling honor. Thank you. Congratulations, Jordan. Please now turn your attention back to the screen as we recognize the accomplishments of tonight's second inductee, the late Nick Maestrom.
There are very few student athletes that had an impact on the Colorado College football program more than Nick Maestrom. Maestrom, a three-sport athlete in football, basketball, and soccer at West High School in Anchorage, Alaska, arrived at Colorado College in the fall of 1989 and continued his football career at CC. He was a multi-talented player, serving as a wide receiver and kicker throughout his career as a Tiger. Maestrom holds the school record for most points scored in a career with 263 and season with 120. 10 as a senior in 1993. He is also number two on the school's career list for touchdown receptions, number three for receiving yards, and number four for career receptions. He led the 1993 football team to an 8-1 record and was named the program's most valuable player in 1992 and 93. Following his time at CC, he played two seasons in the Canadian Football League with the Memphis Mad Dogs, earning a spot on the CFL All-Rookie Team in 1995. When his playing career came to an end, Maestro became a developer, builder, teacher, and entrepreneur, but his passion was giving back to his community. He created, with the help of many friends, an annual event in Denver that donated more than 30 full-ride scholarships to Colorado State University for underprivileged young people in Denver. Maestrom passed away in 2019. Please welcome Nick Maestrom to the Colorado College Athletic Hall of Fame. To present Nick Maestrom into the CC Hall of Fame, a four-year letter winner in football at Colorado College. He played offensive line for the Tigers, helped the 1993 team to an 8-1 record, and is a 1996 graduate of Colorado College. Please welcome Ian Campbell. Yeah, and to be clear, that 8-1 team that Nick would play with Nick on, I was playing pretty much from the bench at that point. Um, not, not, not much con contribution from my side on that. But uh, everybody, I'm, my name is Ian Campbell, uh, class of 96, uh, football alum. Tonight I have the opportunity to introduce Nick Meistrom in the 2023 Colorado College Hall of Fame. And as we said, uh, Nick passed away unexpectedly in 2019, but I know he'd be honored by this uh, induction. Nick was a dominant receiver and kicker and a key con contributor to an almost perfect season, which we talked about in, in, in 1993 with the 8 1 record. Uh, he holds a school record for most points in a career at 263 and in a single season at 110 in 1993. He was named the program's MVP twice in 92 and 93. After college, Nick entered the CFL and as a kicker, um, playing two seasons with the Memphis Mad Dogs, earned the spot of the CFL, CFL All-Rookie Team in 1995. Nick ended up settling in Denver um, and, and became a general contractor and a restaurant owner and, and, and a philanthropist. Um, he never gave up on his passion for athletics. And, uh, you know, one of the things I remember is that he wrote a story for the uh, Mile High Sports called The Jack of All Trades. And what he would do, he, Nick, Nick would go out and challenge the very best athletes from all the different high schools. And, you know, whether it be the, the best wrestler or the best, you know, racquetball player, he'd go out and compete with them and then write about that in his, in his journal. Um, and, 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 and then publish that article. And the, the one I remember the most was that Nick went out um, because Oprah Winfrey um, had, had decided to run a marathon. He was like, well, if Oprah can run a marathon, I'm going to run a marathon and beat her. Um, so, you know, she, she wasn't aware of the competition, but Nick, you know, was, was very much competitive with her. He went out with, a, you know, basically no training at all, a pair of, you know, worn down running shoes that I don't think he's ever really run more than a few miles in his whole life. Uh, he fin finished the uh, marathon in under six hours, uh, which, you know, that seems good to me. I don't, I don't know if that's re really good or not. But uh, he, I think he beat Oprah, which would, uh, the, which would hold a day. And, uh, you know, he, he ended up really finishing that with, you know, both respect for marathon runners, obviously, and Oprah. I mean, Oprah finished that, and, and Nick, Nick literally had full – um, blisters across both seat, feet. What did you say? Seven toe, seven toenails in that. You know, so and he, he struggled through it definitely, but he but he finished. 
Um, but th that was the kind of athlete and competitor Nick was. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it, it was just a testament to his, you know, kind of overall competitiveness. Um, I really want to thank, you know, Colorado College and the Athletic Department for putting this on and hosting this event. Um, and, and thanks for Nick's family. We've got a really good crew of friends here. We've got a son, Duke, who's here in the crowd, which, you know, I'll be talking about in a second, and, and his teammates for making the trip. Nick was a great friend and teammate, and I'm honored to present this award. Um, please welcome Jen Maestrom and Duke Maestrom, who's accepting on behalf of the Class of 23 Athletics Hall of Fame, Nick Maestrom. Nick's sister, Jen Maestrom, and unfortunately, the rest of our family couldn't be here today because there was a volcano in Russia, and we're from Alaska, and because of the volcano, there were some ashes that happened, and none of the flights went out. So apparently, Russia's causing havoc in a lot of places, <laughs> <laughs> including our lives. This is Duke, Nick's son, and we're so happy to have him here with us. And as you can see, he's a spitting image. He's going to be an athlete just like his dad is. Um, I really wish my family could be here with us tonight, but they aren't. And no one would love to be here more than Nick. This is the kind of place where he thrives. He was very accustomed to these kinds of things, getting accolades, winning state championships, um, medals, and going above and beyond in athletics. And if my dad was here to give the speech like he was supposed to tonight, he would tell you about all my brother's stats and every medal he won. But as his younger sister, that's not what I remember. I remember who he was off the field. And I remember the things that he did for people and the lives he changed. And he was the man in the room who made everybody feel larger than life, who found the person who needed something and he gave it to them. He found the hospitals that had kids who didn't have presents or a Santa Claus and made me dress up as an elf and go give them presents for Christmas. He was more than an athlete. And I hope all of you young students hear this. He was a whole human being and made changes in people's lives in every respect. Um, and so I just want to thank you so much for honoring his legacy and who he was as a whole person for our entire family, but most of all for his son, Duke. And thank you so much. Congratulations to Nick's family. Let's turn our attention back to the screen right now as we recognize the accomplishments of our next inductee, Helen Sneath. Helen Sneath is one of only 16 athletes in the history of Colorado College Athletics to be named a three-time All-American. Also a three-time All-American in high school in Pennsylvania and a selection to the National High School All-Star Lacrosse Game, Sneath arrived at Colorado College in the fall of 2002. She made an impact right off the bat at CC, posting 73 points in 2003, the second most by a freshman in the history of the program, and earned her first All-America honor. She collected 48 goals and 25 assists in her first collegiate season. She followed it up with another All-America season with 66 points on 39 goals and 27 assists as a sophomore, then led the Tigers to the NCAA semifinals as a junior in 2005. She scored another 39 goals as a senior in 2006 and gathered her third All-America selection. Sneath finished her career at the top of the program's career lists and assists, caused turnovers and draw controls, number two in ground balls, number three in points, and number four in goals. She's still in the top six in all all of those categories. Sneath is currently working for LB Snow, an outdoor shop in Montana that rents and sells river gear in the summer and tune, rent, and sell ski snowboard gear in the winter. She's the proud mother of her children, Ryder and Ruby. Please welcome Helen Sneath to the Colorado College Athletic Hall of Fame.
to present Helen into the Colorado College Sports Hall of Fame is the only head coach in the history of the women's lacrosse program at Colorado College. The program started in 1995. She ranks sixth among Division III head coaches with 297 career victories and led the Tigers to 11 NCAA tournament appearances. Please welcome women's lacrosse head coach, Susan Stewie Stewart. Well, congratulations to all of the award winners tonight. It's always a great opportunity to celebrate excellence. Um, and I have the privilege, this seems awfully loud. Is it awfully loud to you in the back? Because it's awfully loud to me in the front. <laughs> um, I get the great privilege of introducing Helen Sneath, um, who was not only a spectacular athlete, as you heard, um, from her announcement, one thing that they did leave off is almost 20 years out, don't mean to age you, um, Helen still has in the top 10, um, she's in the top 10 of all of our categories for lacrosse for all time. And that means scoring goals, assisting goals, take, getting draws, getting ground balls, and getting caused turnovers. That is an amazing feat. That's truly the mark of a complete player. Um, a true two-way midi. Helen was amazing to watch. Uh, her teammates would uh, often just sort of chuck the ball in her area because Helen was gonna get it and make something happen. And so she was often tasked with like catching some ridiculous pass, you know, um, way behind her, full stride, have to handle it under pressure, usually getting clocked and then move on and make something else happen. Um, and she did it effortlessly and gracefully. That was the one thing that was fun to watch was everyone knows when I'm working hard and Helen made everything look easy. Right, that's, I love watching um, athletes who are just that spectacular. Uh, she was, she did help us get four years into NCAA tournament. Uh, we had a final four appearance, our only final four appearance, appearance was also uh, under, under Helen's watch and um, kind of kicked us off into internet, or, no, sorry, not internet, international recognition as a, a nationally recognized program. Um, but the good thing, the great thing about Helen is understanding who she is. When I went and met with her um, in the recruiting process, I flew out to Pennsylvania and when I sat down and we started talking, I said, this is a kid who needs to come to Colorado College because she is an incredibly independent woman. Um, she knows what she wants. She is connected deeply to the out of doors and um, thus the geology major in her. Um, and this was a place that she could thrive because Colorado College offers endless possibilities and she was one who took advantage of many of them. I remember Mark Hatch actually having a conversation with me her freshman year because Helen wanted to have an independent study and go travel um, during her freshman fall semester and he thought that was unusual. And I said, well, Helen is unusual and she is here in the right place and made it happen. Uh, but the, uh, the best story that we have from her was, again, from her teammates. I'm standing on the sideline along the bench, and I hear, as Helen has to make some other crazy catch and do something crazy, makes it, makes it look really graceful, and one of her teammates says, I love watching Helen. It, she's magical. So she doesn't know this, but she has been magical Helen since that moment. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I get to, we would like to please welcome the class of 2023 Athletics Hall of Fame inductee, Helen Sneath, and maybe her children. <laughs>
Um, Ruby's up here with me, but um, I'm not very good at speeches, but uh, I do remember very dis distinctly um, kind of looking at different colleges and talking to coaches and being told that I was not allowed to ski at all during college. Um, I wasn't very psyched about that. And then I talked to Stewie and she was like, oh yeah, I snowboard like every weekend. And I was like, okay, I think I can <laughs> handle this. <laughs> um, uh, and I just loved that I was able to do everything that I loved here at Colorado College. It was really fun. Um, just like a great well-rounded place. And I met so many people and I'm still um, in that outdoor world and I just love it. And I, I'm not sure if I had to stop that during college if I would have continued on with that love. And so I'm grateful for that. And Stewie, who is an incredible coach, and Mish, who's here, who is also an amazing coach. Um, and Bruce, the trainer, uh, who was around, he was just the best. They were a pretty solid support crew while in college. So I am very grateful for that. So thank you so much. Congratulations, Helen. Let's turn our attention again up to the big screen as we recognize the accomplishments of tonight's fourth inductee, the late Leo Hill. Leo Hill only spent two years at Colorado College, but was very successful as a student athlete those two years. He was just as successful in the game of life prior to and after his time at CC. Following his graduation from Pueblo Centennial High School in 1941, Leo served as a second lieutenant and pilot in the United States Army with the 440th Troop Carrier Group in the European Theater during World War II. He was honorably discharged in December of 1945. After attending Pueblo Junior College, Leo transferred to Colorado College, where he was a two-sport athlete in basketball and baseball, earning a pair of varsity letters in each sport. He was an all-conference performer in baseball and led the league with a 400 batting average as well as extra base hits. As a senior, he was named the winner of the Van Deest Award, given to the school's top senior athlete and to the National Phi Delta Theta All-Sports Honor Roll Baseball Team. Following his graduation, he was the city manager of Columbia, Missouri, before returning to Colorado to become a vice president and treasurer of the University. University of Colorado. He also served as president and CEO of First National Bank in Boulder prior to his retirement in 1988. Hill was a big believer in community service. As a community leader, he served as president of the Boulder Chamber of Commerce, the United Way of Boulder County, and the Alumni Club of Colorado College. He also played an important role in the process that ultimately brought the National Center for Atmospheric Research to Boulder. Leo passed away in 2014, 17 years after the death of his beloved wife, Betty Lou. Please welcome Leo Hill to the Colorado College Athletic Hall of Fame. To present Leo Hill into the Colorado College Sports Hall of Fame is a 1999 graduate and three-year letter winner in basketball at CC. He has spent 16 years as a Division I assistant coach before returning home to Colorado College. He's the head coach and has been the head coach for the past three seasons of the men's basketball program. And just this past season, he led the team to the most wins since the 2017-18 season. Please welcome the head coach of the Tigers men's basketball team, Jeff Conero. Stewie, you stole my line. I just want to say that right up at the top. Uh, congratulations, and it's awesome here to be here tonight to celebrate excellence that's manifested as CC. Uh, congratulations to all the past uh, inductees, especially my better half, uh, and all the future inductees in the current class. As I was speaking to Chuck, who's going to come up here in just a second, uh, he told a story about Leo that I really think resonates with the excellence at Colorado College. Excellence in industriousness, creativity, ingenuity, and courage. He was talking about how Leo flew cargo planes in World War II, and occasionally a case of scotch for the officers would make it 
onto the cargo plane. And, a, and every once in a while, a couple of those bottles would get damaged or broken and disappear from the case and get used for other reasons. And I just thought, wow, what a CC graduate that is. <laughs> As we just witnessed, Leo Hill was certainly an accomplished student athlete. But his life after CC as a professional, a philanthropist, and an engaged citizen is quite frankly awe-inspiring. In our basketball program, we regularly talk about growing and enhancing the legacy of those who came before us, walking on the shoulders of giants, an idiom that's always more of an idea than reality until I started to learn about Leo. Let's take a moment here to really consider Leo's lifetime's accomplishments. A World War II officer, two sports student athlete, cum laude graduate, uh, all conference on the baseball team, hit 400, led the conference in extra base hits and batting. Then he goes on to be a leader and a consum consummate professional, civically engaged, chairman and CEO of a bank holding corporate a company that it was in charge of 29 banks and six corporations, a philanthropist, starting as a student in charge of the intramural program here at CC, then goes on to be the former president of the Colorado Bankers Association and part of the Colorado College Board of Trustees once upon a time. He was very engaged as an alum and gave back to the college community in many ways. Any one of those achievements could be a lifetime endeavor for most of us. Leo Hill accomplished it all and much, much more. As President Richardson says, that's not easy. And we don't do easy here at Colorado College. In fact, Leo epitomizes what we hope to accomplish with championship culture here at Colorado College Athletics. To all the current student athletes here tonight, please listen to this. Leo's legacy gives us a blueprint for all Tigers to leverage their competitive experience to pursue excellence in every facet of life, utilizing the entire CC experience to be champions in life and impactful leaders in the, in the communities in which we serve. That truly is Leo Hill. Please welcome Charles Arand, who is accepting on behalf of the class of 2023 Athletics Hall of Fame inductee, Leo Hill. Thank you, uh, myself and my brother, Richard Arand, who could not be here tonight, are very proud and honored to accept this award on behalf of my uncle, Leo Hill. We lost Leo uh, nine years ago, but it's very evident that the lessons that he learned here at CC suited him well for his career and for the rest of his life. Uh, this is not <clears throat> the first Hall of Fame that Leo has been inducted into. In, in 2004, he was inducted into the Centennial High School Hall of Fame where he grew up in Pueblo. Uh, I don't know where my Aunt Betty Lou got this made, but she had made a life-size stand-up poster of Leo in his Colorado College basketball uniform. It was about this high, and I, I, wish, I, I wish I had it to bring here tonight because it would have been a, a topic of conversation for sure. Now, my, my brother and I, when we first got a look at this, uh, I think it was in mid-1970s. We were both in, in college at the time. There was two things very evident about this poster. One is that the haircuts back in those days were very short. Uh, the other thing that was very evident 
is that the, the basketball shorts that they wore back in those days were very short. So, <laughs> um, as Jeff said, uh, Leo believed in, in community service and CC was one of many institutions that he gave his time, effort, and resources to. I thank you again, Colorado College. Leo would be very honored and humbled to accept this award. Congratulations to, to Leo Hill's family. And once again, I ask that we turn our attention up to the big screen as we recognize the accomplishments of tonight's fifth inductee, Dang Pibblevich. Dang Pibblevich produced some outstanding accolades as head coach of the women's soccer program from 1983 to 1990. His teams collected an amazing 119, 26 and eight record, good for an 804 winning percentage. And he led the Tigers to seven consecutive NCAA Division I playoff berths during his eight years at CC. Not only did his squads appear in the NCAA tournament, Pibblevich guided five of his teams to the final four and a pair of national championship match berths in 1986 and 1989. After CC decided to upgrade its women's soccer program to match its Division I men's hockey program, Pebblevich was hired in 1983 following two seasons as an assistant coach at Central Florida. His impact on the program was immediate, helping the 83 team reach number seven in the national rankings with a 14-0-2 record. The Tigers made their first appearance in the NCAA tournament in 1984, advancing to the quarterfinals, then in just their second official season as it folded Division I program appeared in the national championship game in 1986. CC lost to perennial powerhouse North Carolina 2-0 that season, the same score that UNC defeated the Tigers in the 1989 final. In 1991, Pibblevich left Colorado College to start the Division I program at the University of Washington and also served as head coach at Texas, Colorado, and Nevada. He led his teams to six NCAA Final Four appearances, nine NCAA tournaments, and coached 25 Division I All-American Americans, including 20 at Colorado College. Please welcome Dang Pebblevich to the Colorado College Athletic Hall of Fame. To present Dang into the Colorado College Athletic Sports Hall of Fame is a four-year letter winner in soccer at CC. She appeared in the NCAA tournament all four seasons helped the Tigers to the, division, the NCAA Division I championship game in 1989 and the semifinals in 1991. She is a 1991 graduate of Colorado College. Please welcome Jen Rohde Hoagland, president of the Alumni Association Council and former women's soccer player. Hi, I'm Jen Rohde Hoagland, class of 1991, and more importantly, a proud CC Women's Soccer alum. I was so humbled when Leslie asked me to present Dang this incredible honor that recognizes the impact here at CC, but also represents his amazing contributions to his players and their lives, and to women's soccer around the world. Being Dang's prodigy, <laughs> I knew that I couldn't handle the task on my own. I needed input and support from my teammates to really be successful. So I put out an SOS. So these words and memories are a collection of many proud CC Women soccer alums. Dang was a pioneer in our game. He was a highly regarded coach at the regional and national team levels, which helped him recruit a lot of talented soccer players who wanted the best of both worlds, an excellent small college experience mixed with a top 10 program. Dang's coaching feats that others dream about include leading his team to six NCAA Final Fours, nine NCAA tournaments, coaching 25 D1 All-Americans, being named West Region Coach of the Year 
three times and Central Region Coach of the Year twice by the National Soccer Coaches Association of America. Building four Division I women's soccer programs, working as assistant coach for USA women's senior and youth national teams, and ending his career as head coach for youth Thailand national teams. His dedication to our sport reflected his passion and his ability to implement ahead of the time innovative tactics like the 352. Memories are ingrained of three plus hour training sessions teaching us how to time our runs, find space within the game, and execute with precision and a standard of excellence. He knew the game and he knew how to win and he expected us to meet the challenge. One cannot achieve so much without confidence. He constantly talked to us about how we hold ourselves on and off the field was just as important as how we played. Nothing depicts his confidence better than the story. We played University of North Carolina at home. They rarely came to us, so it was a big deal. Anson Dorrance at the time always coached games wearing an Oxford white shirt and a tie. On this day, Dang rolled out to the field in his Hawaiian flip-flops and his collar up, looking so savvy and cool. After the game, somebody asked him about his attire and he said that he wanted to make sure Anson knew he wasn't intimidated by him. Dang was confident in his way. Beyond his on-the-field accolades, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about what impact Dad, Dang had on his players off the field. It went way beyond cuisines from around the world he introduced us to, or our ability to pack car trunks with as many soccer bags as imaginable. He taught us about family. He pushed us to find our passions, make time for fun, and celebrate the small successes just as we did the big ones. His CC women's student athletes took his lessons, coaching, and confidence with them as CC alumni and carried themselves to become pioneers, innovators, and champions in their work and communities. This group include attorneys, corporate businesswomen, statisticians, teachers, all Americans, Hall of Famers, professional soccer players, professional cyclists, Olympic gold medalists, soccer coaches at all levels, professors, entrepreneurs, moms, and aunts to their own kids as well as to all of ours. Leaders and lifelong friends, teammates, family. It's because I care, Jeff. I'd like to close with this. It was summer 1999, Chicago, Soldier Field. Some of you already know where I am, Women's World Cup. I sat in the stand with my towny husband and our first child, who was five months. As our U.S. Women's National Team came out on the field, the crowd went crazy. Children, mostly girls, rushed down the bleachers trying to get pregame autographs. My husband looked at me and said, pretty cool that you helped create this frenzy. I paused and thought, because I wasn't on the field wearing red, white, and blue, I hadn't done anything. But I was wrong. Dang helped us all to contribute something that was bigger than ourselves. Be that Final Fours, NCAA tournament bursts, women's soccer worldwide, Colorado College, our teammates. For that, each one of us is forever grateful. It is my honor to introduce Dang's youngest daughter, Kalina, who is here to receive this amazing recognition on his behalf. Please welcome Kalina Pivovec, who is accepting on behalf of Class of 2023 Athletic Hall of Fame inductee, Dang Pivovec.
Well, that's going to be hard to follow up. Um, I apologize for being emotional. Um, my dad taught me many of things, but public speaking was something that he did not teach me. So bear with me. Um, unfortunately, due to some unfortunate circumstances, um, our father could not be here with us tonight to receive this award. So everyone always said, I am my dad with a wig on, so I'm the next best thing. Um, my sister and I um, wanted to th first thank Colorado College for the opportunity to be here tonight to proudly represent our father. I spent hours writing this speech over and over again. And it was difficult for me because I don't think there will ever be the words to explain what this award would mean to him. As we gathered in the VIP area this evening, my sister and I were taken back, being here and meeting so many people that were impacted by our father. <laughs> Some would say that our father, Coach Dang, is a man of many talents, but soccer was his true passion and he dedicated his entire life to the game. Growing up with our dad, he told us many stories about his early time as a coach. My sisters and I, as typical teenagers, would roll our eyes as we heard the stories over and over and over again. But for some reason, his time at Colorado College always stood out to us as his face would light up every single time he had a memory to reminisce. We truly believe that the years that he spent here were years that shaped his life and shaped the rest of his career as he went on to accomplish other things. To his players, his family, and everyone that took part of his time here, thank you for being part of our dad's best days of his life. We know that he would have given anything to be here tonight to receive this award. Thank you. Congratulations, Dang and Kalena. Once again, let's turn our attention up to the big screen as we recognize the only team inductee of the night, the 1992 men's soccer team. The 1992 Colorado College men's soccer team is the only team in the program's storied history to advance to the NCAA Division III semifinals. Under legendary head coach Horst Richardson, the team posted an 18-2 and 2 overall record, the most wins in one season in program history. The Tigers took a month-long international trip to Japan during the summer of 92, and the squad bonded in preparation for their record-setting campaign. Following an early season 4-3 overtime loss to Muhlenberg College to put their record at 1-1-1, the Tigers rattled off a program record 18-game unbeaten streak. 11 of them were shutouts, including their first three postseason games. Despite being ranked number eight in the nation and number one in the West region, the Tigers had to travel for those first three NCAA tournament games. A 1-0 victory over Washington University in the quarterfinals sent the team to New Jersey for the Division Three Final Four. The unforgettable season came to an end with a loss to Ohio Wesleyan in the semifinals, but the Tigers still set several program records, including most goals in one season, as well as the longest winning and unbeaten streaks. Aaron Lujan led the team with 25 goals, including seven game winners and 66 points. Goalie Ezra Bales posted an outstanding 1.03 goals against average and had a hand in all 11 shutouts. Bales also recorded an assist during the season. No less than six players from that team played either professional or semi-pro soccer following graduation. Please welcome the 1992 men's soccer team to the Colorado College Athletic Hall of Fame. To present the 1992 men's soccer team into the Colorado College Athletics Hall of Fame is a man that, well, he's synonymous with Colorado College men's soccer. He was the head coach of the program for 49 years, from 1966 to 2015. Under his leadership, the Tigers qualified for 19 NCAA tournaments. He's number six all time among collegiate men's soccer coaches with 567 victories. He's a member of the Colorado Spring Sports Hall of Fame and the CC Athletic Hall of Fame. Please welcome legendary men's head coach and very proud head coach of the 1992 team, 
Horst Richardson. Well, it's a, a lot of impressive statistics, I guess, but uh, um, I'm going to give you a, a secret here to start off with. Uh, uh, the previous speaker, Jen uh, Hoagland Rohde, who, who uh, uh, introduced my colleague, Dang Pibovich, <clears throat> um, just want to let everybody know that she and her husband, Dennis Hoagland, who was an assistant of mine, met in one of our soccer camps. And so Helen and I are directly responsible for them getting together and starting off a wonderful family life in soccer. Jen, way to go. Yeah. <laughs> There was, um, there was an alumni soccer game today on Stewart Field. Um, and um, some of the 1992 players actually participated. And four of them scored. <laughs> uh, unbelievably so, right? Um, in fact, the very first goal, I think, was scored by Noah Epstein. Um, and he was so, so impressive that uh, Scott Palguda, the current coach, took him aside and says, hey, uh, uh, Noah, you, you got any eligibility left there maybe? <laughs> Pretty impressive performance. Um, another goal was scored by Takuma Hayashi. Uh, <clears throat> who is uh, so diminutive, you know, you, you hardly notice him in a lineup. Um, and guess what? He scored a header, a head ball goal. Um, incredible, right? Um, fantastic to watch uh, these guys go out. And, and the 1992 captain, I mean, John, John Whitfield, uh, um, you know, John, you still got it. I mean, I, I must, I must say. That, I mean, the the moves, the feints, the fakes, the you know, uh, fluid movement across the field. What a joy to see these guys perform out there. Well, I, I mentioned Takuma Hayashi because uh, he and his family made possible the 1992 summer foreign tour of the team to Japan. You saw a picture on the screen of that, and. Uh, uh, you know, what a perfect opportunity to extend your preseason um, practice playing games in Japan and having wonderful receptions and parties and other events that I won't mention. Um, but um, it, it was a delightful time. So, you know, I figured, boy, this is going to be a, a great year. We've got all this preparation behind us, right? Um, preseason. Uh, we were ready to go, and after three games, we were one, one, and one. That's pretty average beginning, right? And not at all what we had had in mind. But, you know, we had a, a road trip for game four and five to Minnesota against two pretty formidable opponents and beat them both three nothing away, and the Tigers began to prowl and growl, and they were on their way. Um, a formidable, indeed, uh, road trip for us. And uh, we changed from then on, built momentum, confidence, and it turned into a very, very memorable season. Exceptional leadership from John Whitfield, the captain who's going to speak in a minute, um, co-captain Ezra Bales, a brick wall in the nets, unbelievable goalkeeper, um, Rob Lipp, from whom you will also hear, stellar performances of multiple individuals on defense, offense, 
dedicated support to the team effort, and this is important, an unfailing belief by the entire squad to play every game with an intensity as if it were their last match. Those were the hallmarks of their success. And then, you know, so important, there was so much joy, so much laughter and fun along the way. And the way was a long one. <laughs> it was a long season. I figured out that we traveled during the season and postseason 11,632 miles. Cross country, west coast to east coast. And Leslie, we missed two days of school. <laughs> and that, that's pretty good, right? I mean, that was a pretty good record. Um, so, um, with the encouraging cheers of an ever growing fan base here at the college, with the expert care of the training room, thank you to Bruce Cola and Richard Quincy. With the enjoyable and knowledgeable coaching of two young assistant coaches, Eric Richardson and Dana Taylor, with an athletic administration in full support, Max Taylor, thank you, my friend, and of course, with uh, my wife's Helen's pregame breakfasts at our home, uh, we were off and running and piled on the victories. I mean, there. There are so many stories that I, I could entertain you for, you know, till the ice below your feet melts. Um, but um, I will give you just one. I mentioned Max Taylor, and you saw the Wash U poster here, Washington University, of uh, uh, the, um, the quarterfinal uh, in St. Louis. <clears throat> it was just a one game, right? Um, and uh, probably Whitfield will uh, talk a little bit about this uh, game and uh, the uh, <laughs> various surroundings to fire us up. But uh, that may remain a, a secret. But uh, at any rate, the game goes on. We're ahead 1-0, um, you know, tightly fought match. Um, ten minutes to go, and Ezra Bales to this day maintains that the last 10 minutes of that match were a total blur. Uh, he made one safe after another. I think at one point, Wash U had something like um, 10, 11, 12 corner kicks in a row, and he snared them all. Um, it was so intensive and so much suspense. Max Taylor, who was in the stands with us, uh, traveled with us to St. Louis, he had to leave. He left, <laughs> he left the stadium, went outside and walked up and down the sidewalk. He couldn't stand it anymore. Uh, it, it, it was just too much, too much tension. Um, but we did win one to nothing. Well, um, I was honored to be able to guide these young men along their way and I'm now exceedingly proud to present them for induction to the Colorado College Athletic Hall of Fame 2023. Thank you, guys. Please welcome to the stage John Whitfield and Rob Lipp to speak on behalf of the 1992 men's soccer team. we did it we did it we did it we did it it's uh, it's amazing to stand up here and, and see this because um, when the season was going on it just seemed to just go it, it didn't seem like it was a lot of work because this group was 
such a great group. Um, my name is Robert Lipp, and I'm up here with my best buddy and colleague, uh, John Whitfield. Been asked to say a few words about the 1992 season. And like John and like Ezra, who's in the audience here, I was one of three senior captains uh, for that story team that season. I also had the honor of being named to the NCAA All-American team that same year. So it was a season that I'll never forget in a team that I will always and forever hold dear. It's a great pleasure to see so many familiar faces in the audience tonight, family members and friends and special guests who have traveled from near and far to honor the outstanding athletes, players, coaches, and teams being recognized tonight. We first want to recognize Leslie, Vice President, uh, Director of Athletics, she and her team, including Assistant Athletic Director, Marketing, Jessica Bennett, worked so hard to put this night together. And it's such a fitting and amazing venue to honor our athletes, thank you. Second, we want to recognize and thank the Hall of Fame Committee for the amazing and for the amazing honor and for recognizing what a truly remarkable year 1992 was for men's soccer at Colorado College. So we are all familiar with the expression, it takes a village to raise a child. In similar fashion, I suggest to you, it takes a village to raise a team in a village to support each and every player. Let me explain. I imagine that for all of you that have ever watched a soccer game or any team sport for that matter and thought, wow, that team played like a well-oiled machine. Or maybe you said, damn, that team played, made it look so effortless. Well, I can tell you that teams that achieve this level of connectedness does not happen by accident. The magic on the field occurs due to the extraordinary dedication and efforts of coaches, assistant coaches, training staff, equipment managers, professors, parents, family, tutors, and many more. The honor bestowed upon the team is also theirs, and there are several individuals that we want to honor and recognize for being part of our village. Thanks go out to our assistant coaches, Dana Taylor and Eric Richardson. You always kept a level head, made sure that we acted as a cohesive unit. With your collective experience, we were able to receive additional coaching and guidance that helped us make it come, look easy come game day. I know Dana and Eric aren't here tonight. Uh, hopefully if they get a chance to watch via stream or Zoom, we love you guys, wish you were here. We also want to give a big shout out to Helen and Stacia Richardson, both of whom rarely missed the game and even more importantly filmed many of those games. You both have given us so much joy and did so for many years before and after the now epic 1992 season. Team dinners and gatherings and massive moral support home and away meant so much to all of us. You both were constantly our 12th team. 12th player on the team. And Helen, we also like those hot mic moments on the recordings, you know, when you had those biting but yet constructive <laughs> criticism at those moments that we needed to play just a little bit better. We, we really love that. Uh, so Helen and Stacia, we're, we're, we're so happy that we can recognize you as an integral part of this great team effort. If you would, please. Please. John. All right, we, we, know, we know we're on the clock, but we're gonna rip through this. Thanks, Lipper. We can't go any further. We, you know, this guy gets too many accolades already, but we cannot go any further without a huge thank you to the legendary head coach, Horst Richardson. You're in the presence of a legend, folks. 50, 50 illustrious years and the winningest coach in the, in the program history tells you more about the man than we could ever offer. Thank you, Horst. You're a true icon. Um, just, we value and appreciate your remarkable track record, your leadership, uh, and your, your contribution to the history uh, of Colorado College. It, it'll, it'll ever be etched in our, 
minds forever and in the annals of the history books here. So thank you, sir. Um, we'd be remiss not to mention um, outstanding contributions uh, to other folks uh, locally here, in, in particular the father of Colorado College Soccer uh, and 1995 Hall of May, uh, Fame member Bill Boddington. Um, were it not for his love and his ambition, we would not have had the opportunity to play the beautiful game here at Colorado College. So um, we just want to thank Bill. He was an amazing man. Um, and look what he started. Um, I want to, we want to also just recognize uh, a couple of the past Hall of Fame inductees. Uh, soccer player Saad Sawani, a class of 51. Jay England, 74. Dick Schulte, class of 75. Brigham Olsen, 85. Patrick McGinnis, 2005. And of course, of course, notables Bill Boddington, who I just mentioned. Max Taylor, uh, who was inducted in 2007, uh, who was a former athletics director, as you know, uh, and a huge advocate of our team and program, and of course, Coach uh, Richardson, who was inducted in 2019. Um, and of course, Lou, Aaron Lujan, inducted uh, in 19, to, I'm sorry, in 2009, but class of 1995 and part of the 92 team too, my friend. Uh, love you, dude. Um, we would be nowhere, it was already mentioned before, earlier, by another sports program, which I think is great, but we would be nowhere without the expertise of the training staff, Bruce Cola, uh, Richard Quincy, they too were literally the best in the business, period. They played a massive role in keeping our group healthy in what became a 22-game season. Um, you know, we all can remember the early morning ice baths <laughs> uh, with Bruce and Quincy. Uh, many of you were in the boot, relegated to the boot, you know what that means, uh, and they kept us, uh, they kept us fresh and, and playing top of our game. And finally, one more legend, the late Miss Emily Varley. Um, she was our team equipment manager. Uh, yes, she made sure whatever you needed, whatever you needed, you had it. And um, and if you forgot to return something, you definitely knew it. She was quick to remind you. And by the way, Josh Howell, Josh, 92 team, uh, I think you still have a pair of shorts uh, up in Maine. We're going to get those back from you. Okay, Rob, just a few more highlights, and we'll 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 we're getting the music played off, played off music. But go. Thanks, John. In addition to these significant individuals and their huge accomplishments, it would be a little neglectful if we didn't mention the remarkable highlights of that wonderful 1992 season of which none have been surpassed to date. These include most victories in a season of 18, longest winning streak in a season of 14 games, Longest unbeaten streak in a season of 18 games. Most goals scored in a single season of 78. Best record winning percentage of 18, two and two. For those of you, you math majors, that's 86.4%. <laughs> and to top it all off, we reached the NCAA Final Four, which had never been achieved before and hasn't been since. Um, uh, Coach Paul Gouda, are you here, here. somewhere? Oh, yeah. You're back there? This entire group of guys, the 1992 team, is looking forward to when you get this team back there. And we hope that you can take that gold. All right, get it done. <laughs> But I think we can all agree that 1992 was an outstanding year for the team and for men's soccer, and that hopefully serves as a guidepost for future teams. I want to also thank Coach Richardson and Helen personally for putting up with this motley crew in all of our antics. Even more than this, though, and I think I speak on behalf of the team here, that we felt so validated when, you wa when we watched you take input from the assistant coaches and from us, uh, as your captains. You never disregarded our opinions. Instead, you allowed the team, each and all of us, to be a real team. You didn't force your ideals and tactics on us, but rather by being an excellent listener, you found ways to use our suggestions and turn them into tactical advantages on the field. You made us all feel very valued and prized. With you at the helm, it was always a collaborative effort and one in which every member saw themselves as integral to our success. So thank you, Horst.
Um, just the last thing here, I want to recognize our colleague Serapio Baca uh, sitting right there. Raise your hand, Serapio. He, um, he was all over us telling us every year, we got to get a nomination. We got to get on this. We got to get on this. So um, a regular starter of the 92 team, uh, we've had so many conversations over the years. So Serapio, thank you for sticking us, you know, sticking, making us stick to it and getting us here and, and just, yeah, you're, we'd be nowhere without your efforts, my friend. So thank you. Um, yeah. I just want to say, I just want to say, uh, this night is not about one person. This night is, is about one entity. Um, it's a village that included a group of young men who at some point agreed to have the same goal, uh, which was to excel in soccer. Uh, by remaining focused on that goal, we exceeded expectations in so many ways. Uh, there were so many different personalities in, in this group. We had some jocks, we had some philosophers, some scientists, some artists, uh, some writers, some actors, some uh, undeclared uh, guys like me. Um, I, I, I guess I'd call it a slacker, slackers like myself. Um, but we all agreed on one thing, and, and it was if we did it right and we came together, we might be able to do something significant, and we did. Um, it was Horst that reminded us constantly uh, about our diverse squad and our value of our and the value of our liberal arts education, and how we should handle and manage adversity and to be resolute. And some may recall, um, if Horst, if we ever lost, Horst would say, "Gentlemen, mm, it's an unjust world." Mm. But uh, fortunately, for a few months uh, in history, we responded to what you taught us, Coach. Um, we were all collectively learning and experiencing the mysteries of this world together at Colorado College. And through all of that, we might also score some goals and win some games. 18 of them out of 22, not too shabby. Um, I just want to do this qu very quickly and, and, sh and just mention that we had some exceptional players on our team. Exceptional. We were a hell of a team, but we also had some amazing individuals. This guy right here, incredible. Noah Epstein, Aaron Lujan, Andre Nunley, Rob Lipp, they all went on to play professionally with professional contracts in soccer. They got paid to play soccer. That's amazing. And, and finally, you're not going to win anything if you get scored on. We had the best damn goalie around, Ezra Bales. You don't win games unless you got a hell of a keeper. Ezra, I love you, brother. Um, okay, so I think that's it. I, um, it's truly one of the greatest honors of my life. Rob already mentioned it. Um, thanks, you, all of you, for making this such an enjoyable event. Um, I guess we should do a roster check real quick. You want to do that? Yeah. All right, we're going to do a quick, quick roster check, and you want to get over with me? Yeah. All right, um, right now we're just gonna name them out, hold your applause, no particular order, but every, every one of these people were extremely important in this process, and we couldn't have done it without each and every one of them. Ben Straley. Jeff Montera. Todd Gradick. Mark Handy. Ezra Bales. Dan Burdick. Gilberto Darantes. Paulo Villa. Jeff Jurgens. Serapio Baca. Ian Krieger, get up boys. Andre Nunley. Aaron Fronmeyer. Nick Watterson. Jeff Lee. Aaron Lujan. Noah Epstein. Tom Heisler. Josh Howell. Mark Thomas. Coach Horst Richardson. And Eric. And Dana Taylor. Stand up, guys. <laughs> Welcome to the 1992 Welcome 1992 soccer team to the 2023 Hall of Fame. Ooh, Alela. Ooh, Alela. A Ricky Tiki Tomba. A Mata Mata Kuglo. Oh, yo, 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 yo. Hey. Oh, yo, 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 yo. Put it, put it, on your go. Put it, put it, put it, go. Rovlo. How do you follow that? <laughs> Great job and congratulations to the entire 1992 men's soccer team. At this time, I would like to introduce a member of the Veterans Hall of Fame Committee, former football player, class of 1976, 
and a member of the Hall of Fame class of 2021 with the 1973 football team. Let's bring up Mark Buchanan for a special toast to the class of 2023. I love these occasions, the stories are always great, the camaraderie unmatched. And uh, I just want to say congratulations to everybody. I want a quick moment of privilege. Jeff Conroe did a wonderful job tonight of bringing uh, Leo Hill to life because Jane and I and Bruce were so incredibly impressed with what he had done. And as another personal note, I happened to be an assistant football coach here at the time that Dang was running the program. What a charismatic, phenomenal human being. The funniest guy I think I've ever met in coaching. And, uh, you know, we didn't cross paths except walking out to the field. But, man, what a tremendous human being. Okay. <laughs> now what I'm supposed to do. Uh, on behalf of all the past inductees, it's my pleasure to welcome the class of 2023 to the Colorado College Athletic Hall of Fame. Everyone, would you please join me in raising a glass to the class of 2023. Cheers. Thank you. Party on, dudes. Thank you, Mark. You know, making moments like this are made possible through the generosity of the Tiger Excellence community. Without their support, this and so much more would not be possible. Please turn your programs over to the back and consider making a gift in honor of the Class of 2023 Hall of Fame. I encourage all of you to nominate worthy candidates to the Athletics Hall of Fame. Please complete nominations on the Athletics website, cctigers.com. Nominations received before August 1st of a given year are eligible for the next selection and induction. And once a nomination has been received, it remains active until that person or team is elected to the Hall of Fame. What a great class of inductees again this year, and what a great evening. I ask for one more round of applause. Congratulations to everyone. This concludes the program on yet another fine evening of memories, special times, and recognition of some of those that helped establish great traditions and levels of excellence for the Colorado College Tigers. We thank you all for your attendance this evening, and we certainly look forward to seeing you again next year. Inductees and your families, please meet on the concourse level in the Chapman Room for photos. That's straight up there. Have a great night. Again, thank you for attending. Congratulations, everyone. Drive home safely, and go Tigers!